What's up ladies and gentlemen, Vagabuddies, welcome back to the channel. It has been a long time since we made a favorites video. Far too long. And it's pretty much not even spring anymore, but don't worry, these are our spring favorites. But that's the thing, you, you, you make the favorites video after the season has been done. Is that so how it works? we're just right on time right now. So this is spring favorites from the Vaga Brothers. Let's get into it. So my favorite spring destination is a place that I visited in February with my buddy Griffin, Fez, Morocco. Fez is a medieval city that at one point was the leading center of learning in all of the world and it has the world's oldest university. The medieval quarter is actually the world's largest pedestrian only area and it's such a dense warren of alleyways, a lot of them with dead ends, that it actually doesn't have Google Maps, it doesn't work there, you have to use an old school map to get around. It was a great choice because I only had a couple days, like I said, so I stayed in a couple different Riyads around town. And Riyads are like these old school 16th century houses with a central courtyard, oftentimes the pool. A lot of tourists go to Marrakesh, which is the more popular destination, but Fez is really great value. There's fewer tourists, the prices are lower, and it's much more of a local city. February of this year, I visited Italy with my girlfriend, Carrie Rat. We started in Rome, spent one or two days there, and then we rented a car and we did a road trip through Tuscany. I had never been to Tuscany before, although I had heard so much about it. And to be completely honest with you, I kind of felt like it would be cliche, you know, just a kind of a tourist trap. And what I found was the exact opposite. Now, I know that Tuscany in the summertime is a totally different story. Italy in general in the summertime is a very, very crowded tourist destination. But when I visited in the early spring, late winter, it was absolutely gorgeous. I'm really big on natural hot springs, as is my girlfriend Carrie, and we found two or three really incredible places for a therapeutic bath. Not to mention, the little hilltop villages in Tuscany are gorgeous, and if I had to recommend one that you should go and visit now, it's Pienza. For travel app, I'm recommending Bird. Now, Bird is a app where you can rent a scooter for $1 and then 10 cents a minute. Now, it's been in the news a lot lately because kind of like how Uber and Lyft just kind of showed up and didn't pay attention to local regulatory laws, Bird is doing the same thing. They started here in Santa Monica. So Santa Monica and Venice are really the first places where it started, but it's expanded now to many different cities. Although I understand that this app and this company have been quite controversial, they will probably arrive to a city near you quite soon. Uh, and if they do, or when they do, just pay attention to where you leave your scooters and make sure that you're driving in a respectable way. You don't wanna be going down sidewalks, cutting off pedestrians, or getting in the way of cars. So if you wanna go check it out, We'll put a link down in the info box that will get you a free ride. And we'll also get me a free ride, or Alex. You can choose who you want to give a free ride to. We're really stoked because we do use them quite a bit. When I travel, I do really try to stay in shape. My favorite overall travel exercise app is called Strava. And it's really cool, super simple to use, it's free. And it basically tracks your runs or your walks and gives you kind of an odometer. It'll, it shows how far you've run, how many calories you've burned. Um, it also shows different routes uh, that other runners or cyclists or even swimmers have done in the same city. So it's a really great way for getting your bearings, for tracking your runs and basically trying to keep a routine, a travel fitness routine when you're on the road. So for travel tech, I'm choosing the one product that probably has changed my life the most for the better this year, and that is the Monkey Bars. The Monkey Bars fold down to nothing. It is this big. It's great. It comes with two bars and a, uh, a set of ropes, and then the case itself goes perfectly into your door so you can set it up in your hotel room. I personally get to my hotel room and set it up right away. It's really great to use. And one of the things I love the most about it is the app that comes with it, uh, which features the founder, Monkey Dan, giving demonstrations of all the different workouts. Uh, there's a 21 day habit building part of the app. So it's like, you click on the app, you go to 21 day uh, habit builder, and there's a set of 21 workouts. You do one each day, they're very easy, and it will get you in the routine of using this as a fitness routine. 
The only downside of this is that it's quite expensive. They're $200, which can seem quite a bit. And if you want, there's also a $99 version of this available on their Kickstarter right now. It's a very stripped down, even, even more lightweight version. So go check that out as well. This spring, we've been spending a bit more time here in Los Angeles at home. And one of the things that kind of gets to me, but I never ac actually get around to doing, is cleaning my house, sweeping dust. It's a nightmare. It's one of those things that you either have to stay on top of or you just end up living in a dust bowl. I chose the first option, staying on top of it, but by not wasting any of my time doing it. And I did that with this new piece of technology called the iLife Robotic Vacuum Cleaner. It's pretty insane. We've nicknamed him Charlie and you have to speak to him in a British accent. It's Charlie cleaned my floor. You plug him in, he charges himself, and then you can set a schedule in which Charlie just wakes up, he maps the entire floor space of your house, and an hour or so later, he's back in the charging bay with a full container of dust and other, you know, detritus that's on your house floor. If you're a clean freak and a lazy one like me, then this little robotic vacuum cleaner is gonna change your life. Favorite humans. This is really hard and whenever we do these videos, this for me is the hardest part because I have so many favorite humans, it's really hard to choose one. Chris Ramsey. He is a magician out of Montreal, Quebec. He has a really cool channel in which he does like magic tricks and reviews and reactions to bad magic, which I found very funny. Um, but overall, he's just a super nice guy. He's a super talented uh, magician. Some of the things that he did in front of me with his magic tricks were absolutely mind boggling. So head over to his channel, tell him we sent you and check out some magic because Magic does exist. So for my favorite human of the month, it goes to my friend Danny from Spatial Solutions. She is basically a feng shui organizer, I would say, although she's not really traditional feng shui. She kind of combines a combination of uh, the KonMari method, which is made famous by Marie Kondo, uh, which is basically a Japanese author who recommends removing things from your life to make it more minimal and then setting up your stuff in a very efficient way so you never have anything out of place and your life becomes more simple. I recently worked with Danny to organize my house and she's done a great job. So if you live in the LA area, I highly recommend checking her out and, uh, and working with her. My favorite souvenirs, my favorite memories, um, which I have organized into a gallery of photography, which is available for print. And you can share some of my favorite memories and my favorite photos from around the world and from years of travel uh, and have it hanging in your, you know, in your house or your apartment. This is one of the photos that I took of Marco in India. I printed it for him and gave it to him for Christmas. But there are many, many more photos from many, many more of our trips available in my gallery. So if you go to alexthevagabond.darkroom.tech I will leave a link in the description box. You can check out the collection of my favorite photographs from around the world and take one of our souvenirs home with you too. Okay, so for souvenirs, I'm gonna cheat and mention a couple things within the same umbrella. Basically cooking. Cooking is a great souvenir. You can go to a country and learn how to cook something and bring home a recipe that will keep on giving long after you're back. I recently went to Spain and did a trip to the Basque Country and Sevilla and Mallorca to learn about Spanish cooking. And if you haven't seen those videos, you can click on the card up here to watch them now. So after that trip, I went to Fez and brought home some spices to make tangines and all sorts of other awesome things. You can get a lot of spices here at home nowadays with globalized trade, but there's nothing better than bringing spices back from far away. That is what is the underpinning of our entire global society. Everything started with going somewhere else to buy spices you couldn't get here. So it's a very old thing, it's nothing new, but it's a great way to bring something home from another country. Sticking with the food theme, in podcasts, I'm gonna recommend Food, a culinary history of the world, which is produced by the Great Courses. You've probably seen the Great Courses in like Nat Geo or some sort of magazine. It's pretty old school. They have basically DVD courses. But this is a podcast and it's amazing. It's taught by this professor named Ken Albala and he is a professor of food studies um, here in California. This podcast basically deconstructs a lot about where food comes from. And it's absolutely fascinating. It's more of a class than a podcast. 
Uh, there's like over two dozen episodes. It starts with ancient hunter-gatherers, moves through Judaism, through medieval Christianity, through the Arab worlds, through Hinduism and all sorts of different influences of food up to the present moment. It's fascinating. If you're into food or into history, you'll love it. I am not a huge podcaster, but what I have recently got into is Audible. I uh, love reading, but I find that I don't have a ton of time to do it. Uh, but I do have a lot of passive time, whether I'm driving or doing chores or whatever it is, exercising, where I can actually listen to books and consume them much faster than if I were to actually read it. And I know it's different. The act of reading is very nice. I enjoy, you know, flipping a page as much as the next person. But there's something that is unique about listening. And I think that in this day and age, listening is a skill that we all need to practice and we all need to try to implement more in our daily lives. So having someone read a book that you're interested in to you via Audible is a pretty good solution. For television, I'm recommending The Zen Diaries of Gary Shandling on HBO. It's a two-part documentary produced by Judd Apatow about uh, the director's former mentor, Gary Shandling, who is a very, very famous comedian from the 70s and 1980s. But the documentary is really fascinating because Gary Shandling is a complex character. He's someone who struggled with depression, anxiety, and he became very spiritual in his way of dealing with that. And it talks a lot about stand-up comedy and the rigors that that profession and hosting late night television put on him. When we're on the road, we don't get a lot of time to watch any television or any Netflix or any new series or movies or whatever. So when we're back in LA, when we're back home, I really do kind of take advantage of binge watching um, series. And I have done quite a bit of that lately. So it's very hard for me to choose a favorite show. But if I had to, I think I would recommend to all of you the show on Netflix called Godless, seven part mini series that is a Western, but um, the show is just so well done. The cinematography is unreal. The storyline is incredible. I won't spoil it for you. All I'm gonna say is that Jeff Daniels, the actor who is usually known for his comedy, he actually plays the main villain and he does such a great job of getting under your skin and, uh, and, and scaring you in a psychological way. I really like that it has a clear beginning, middle, and end, and that it's a complete story. They're not trying to make a second season. It's a limited series. So uh, if you have any free time, go check it out. Okay, so for books, as you know, I probably can't choose one. I've got tons of books, and you know, I'm also doing the Marco Book Club over on my own channel, so if you haven't subscribed, you go check that out too. But for this month's book, I'm gonna be recommending a cookbook, The 4-Hour Chef by Tim Ferriss. This book is great for a couple of reasons. Number one, it follows the slow carb diet, which is a way that I personally use to stay healthy by basically cutting out carbohydrates and, and milk and sugar. But more generally, I think that this book approaches how to cook better than any other cookbook. Most cookbooks are focused on a theme or a style and you just have to jump in and start learning. This book literally starts at day one for someone who doesn't know anything about anything. It, talk, it tells you what sort of utensils to buy for your kitchen, what sort of uh, food you should have stocked in your pantry, and then it walks you through from starting with a very simple dish all the way up to molecular gastronomy. So if you don't know how to cook, buy The 4-Hour Chef and you will thank me for it later. Favorite book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a by Mark Manson. Now, the title alone is enough to catch your eyes and perk up your ears, but there is some really solid philosophy behind this book. And the philosophy is that in this modern world, in this day and age, all of us give way too many Fs about way too many things, and that is negatively affecting our lives. This book really helps you take a step back, reevaluate yourself, your current situation, your career, your life, and decide what are the things, what are the Fs that you really need to give and what are the most important things in your life? Last but not least, clothing item. For clothing, I'm gonna recommend a hat, because most of you ask me about my hats, but not one that you'll expect. This spring, I'm recommending the beret. A quick history about the beret. A lot of people say that it's French. The reality is 
The beret comes from the Basque country, where it's called a chapella. Basque people wear it like this. Soldiers wear it like this. Girls wear it something like this. The beret started in the Basque country, but it came to France because the Basque country spills over into France, and there are French Basques. And it was popularized during the Paris Commune of 1871 when it was associated with being a revolutionary. Guys are wearing it much less than girls are. Girls are definitely wearing it in red, beige, whatever color. But whatever color you rock it in, I say don't be afraid to wear the beret. It's super cool. You have my approval at the very least. I'll be real with you ladies and gentlemen out there. When I'm not traveling and when I'm not on camera, I'm almost always in board shorts and sandals or sweatpants and a hoodie. But what I have found lately, this was given to me for my birthday, all birds. They're all wool, basically sneakers, but they're designed to be worn without socks. They're clean enough to be like a smart casual look, but they're extremely comfortable. So if you're in the market for a comfy new pair of sneakers that you can just throw on uh, without thinking too much, these are the ones. All right, ladies and gents, hopefully you enjoyed that video. We need to do this more often. We, we need to sit down with you guys and girls out there and share our favorite things. And it has been way too long, so we're gonna make it more of a priority to at least hit a favorites video every season. Okay, yeah, let us know what else you want us to do in the favorite video. And if you guys want to check out anything we mentioned in this video, there are links down below in the info box. So if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share with your travel buddies, subscribe if you have not already, and turn on notifications. All right, in the meantime, remember, stay curious, keep exploring, and we will see you on the road. Peace.